So in this video, I'll be modeling this part here. It's a small component of a larger shoulder joint assembly. It attaches to the motor shaft here, and it's designed to link with a larger herringbone gear. Some generous viewers have contributed towards my project over the last few weeks, so I've purchased a more powerful motor to work with, and I'm building this uh, shoulder joint around it. The part needs to fit onto an 8mm D shaft here. Needs space for a 3mm square nut here, so that an M3 screw can be used to secure the whole thing together. Here it is printed out. The fit is snug enough that it will probably be fine even without the screw, but it will help. Square nuts. Somewhat unusual, but very handy for 3D printed parts. I go through hundreds of these things. The fit is tight. I could probably reprint this with a slightly larger hole, but instead I'm going to use a heat gun here just to soften it up a bit. Uh, much easier. I'll just make sure this is aligned in here. These needle nose pliers are very handy. All right, that's looking good. The uh, translucent plastic makes it apparent what's going on here. All right, let's jump over to actually modeling this. Here's the completed part. A bit of a roughed in assembly, and there's a lot wrong with this at the moment. So I'll build it from scratch just to show the process of putting this kind of part together. It's not a very complicated part, but I think it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to start with this cog wheel here, resize it to the correct size. Now I'm just building this in a vacuum here, so the size doesn't really matter so much. But for interlinking with other gears, the pitch diameter is crucial. And that is this circle here, if you're curious, right in the middle of the tooth. You got the addendum and the root as well for reference, but they're not going to be so important right now. So I'll extrude the gear about half a centimeter, and I'm going to mirror it. So our gear should be about centimeter thick, and I'm going to twist it to create the herringbone shape. I'm going to make sure the inner hole is uh, appropriate to the shaft of the motor that I have, which is a uh, 8mm shaft, I think. Now I want to clip off the edges of the gear. This looks a lot nicer, but it also has a practical effect as well. If the edges of the gears are too sharp, they have a tendency to bind up or get snagged on things. So I like to bevel them or round them off. So this is where the SDF modeling comes in. I'll be placing these uh, basic elements inside of a volume modeling field. This yellow cylinder with the, the bevel on it and the blue gear. So long as I set the resolution of the volume modeler to be higher than the resolution of my 3D printer, I'm not going to have to worry about any artifacts that are created. And so far I haven't run into any problems with this. I've got the resolution set here to a little bit more than a tenth of a millimeter, which is perfectly fine for this gear. You can see the results of setting the resolution too low here. At one millimeter, for example, there are all these artifacts. So at a higher resolution, you're still going to see these artifacts when you look up close, but they're beneath the capability of the printer to reproduce, so it really doesn't matter. I'll bring the cylinder into the field and then intersect them. And now I can play around with the kind of bevel shape that I want. I think the next thing to do is to add this tube onto the side. And I want that to be as thick as possible so it doesn't break off. I'm going to put a little uh, cube on the inside of one face to catch the, the notch in the shaft. 
So next I need to make a slot for the square nut to fit into. Just gonna make a appropriately sized box with a bit of a thing sticking out of it on one side. Channel, I guess. We'll put that into place here. Subtract it from the rest of the volume. Now I'm gonna wanna put a cylinder in here for the M3 screw. Subtract it from the volume as well. And lastly, I'm just gonna sort of face off the top of the tube, just so it's flat. And that's basically it. The part is ready to print now. So now that it's printed out, I'm gonna test the fit on the shaft. See if this works out. Oh, very satisfying. So this seems like it's working out pretty well. Now I should be using a much shorter uh, screw here, or even uh, one of these headless grub screws for this, uh, for this here. But for now I'm just using a, a normal screw. So I'll do a future video on this complete shoulder assembly at a, a later time when I've got more work done on it. But for now, I hope this video was interesting to get a bit of a window into how some of these parts are modeled. Thanks for watching.